Hello and welcome back to the show. My name's Irrelevant. This is Do All The Things. And on today's episode, further continuing the cycle of violence, my Jet City head goes under the knife once again. This time, I need to fix a bias issue. Not a known issue with these heads, just a known issue with mine because it's hacked. If you've been following the comedy, you are aware that at some point in human history, I acquired a used Jet City head with a blown power transformer, and I replaced said transformer with a NOS unit I found on the Bay of Ease. Yes, it's brand new, but it's old as frig. And well, it worked really well, except for the fact that it had abnormal voltages, only a 170 volt secondary. But that's okay, because in order to get it working, we set up a voltage doubler. Because the Jet City has, you know, stacked capacitors, we were able to leverage that in our advantage by simply rearranging the rectifier scheme. You know, what happens here is uh, during one phase, the positive flows to the top of this capacitor and charges it. Then when the phase reverses, the negative Negative flows to the bottom of this capacitor and charges it. They both get prospectively charged with, you know, the half voltage that we're working with. And then the sum of both these capacitors results in a doubled voltage. What starts off as a 170 volt transformer ends up giving us about 470 to 480 volts after rectification. And it works very well, except proportionally as the transformer is lower voltage, so is the bias tap. Now, because of the way this voltage doubler works, we can't just tap directly off this secondary. There's a diode blocking any positive transfer to the circuit ground, so we can't tap negative voltage off of it. We need to use that bias secondary, but that bias secondary is only something like 30 volts. And I would imagine that whatever tubes this uh, transformer was designed to run, just as they require a lower B+, they would probably also require less negative voltage to hold their bias. And well, it's not working for me in this amp. Now, when I first installed it, I did certain hacks. Uh, not sure how well I can illustrate them here, but basically our bias coil, instead of connecting it directly to ground, we connected it to one of the spare six volt secondaries, which connects to ground. And we gained about six volts on our bias supply. And that was fine. I got it working for the six CA7 tubes that I like to use in this amp, but I could not get it working when I swapped out to the 6L6WXT tubes that I like to use in this amp sometimes. Um, I like to play musical tubes, right? It's flavor of the month, flavor of the week, flavor of the day. Oh, I feel like a different sound in this amp today. I swap out the tubes. I have bias mods, so it's easy to do. But that also only works if your bias supply is working properly and gives you the range you need. So 6CA7s, I put the WXTs back in and boom, they're running too hot. I didn't have enough negative voltage. So I went in here and I changed a, a resistor value right there. One of the re dropping resistors in the Jet city circuit represented right here r11 i replaced it with a 2.2k instead of a 15k that increased my negative voltage and i was able to get the 6l6s into bias but now when i put the 6a7s back in they run too cool and i don't have enough range to turn the bias down so how do we solve this problem the same way we uh solved the problem with the main secondary we're gonna build a voltage doubler circuit in this amp yes are once again going to be leveraging one of our hobby boards here and I got to find a place to mount it first. I would like to put it right about here. So what if we had a hole right about there, a hole right about here. Oh yeah, there's totally a trace right there. A high voltage trace even. We don't want to go anywhere near that. Oh, we're going to have to get creative, sir. It looks finer thread. Is it though? And it bottoms out. Okay. Now, hi, how hot? Oh, still not enough. Still not enough, but hey, there's a hole there. We can use that. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Oh, here's a spacer. Ooh, look at that nice spacer. Oh, bud, that's just about perfect. Now, do I have a screw that's compatible that's longer? Wait, that looks about right. Hey, you come on. Yeah, that's the correct thread. How deep is it going? It's going that deep, which combined with the spacer is a bit much. Okay, close, close, we're almost there. Hey, what's this? It's too short is what it is. What's this little guy? We have an arfer. That looks promising. What's this? That might be just long enough. Quite by chance, I think we found a combination of mounting solutions that's gonna work for us. So we got a standoff right there, and I found a spacer and a screw long enough, and then one of these one inch standoffs, if I mount that elsewhere, it's gonna line up. 
height wise. So that means we can mount our hobby board like in around this general area. All right, let's see if we can get uh, this standoff in here nice because there's a hole right right hiding in here behind all these wires. Actually, we're getting too carried away here. We need to run a couple tests first before we continue. I need to establish something resembling a target voltage. So I want to get these uh, solve techs dialed in here and see once again because I never actually measured the negative voltage. I need to find out what they're going to sit at. Uh, where's those beautiful bean footages right there? All right, dialed into roughly 45 milliamps. Let's see. Uh, Let's see what kind of voltages we're dealing with here. So, uh, we got about 55 volts, 49 across this situation, which explains part of our problem. We need about 60. So getting 55 to start is okay, but then we can't turn down the range enough. So where is, I'm trying to remember, pin three, eight, set this pin, pin threes, no, pin three, pin four. Negative 48 volts. It's kind of what we're expecting. So negative 48 volts is what we need on here. However, when we turn our bias all the way down, we only get negative 54. And if we turn it all the way up, we only get negative 44. Yeah, that range is too narrow. Now the Jet City schematic doesn't really give us voltages. <sighs> what I should do is go pop open my Jubilee real quick, which I had that transformer in here before and it worked perfectly great. And then we could read how much bias voltage it has. All right, so Project Jubilee clocked in at a balmy 88 volts after rectification. So that's our target because there's some uh, trickery that we're going to have to do to make this work. We can uh, go ahead and put the voltage divider on there, but that doesn't mean we're going to get the voltages we want. If we have too much voltage, our system's going to be out of calibration in the other way. So the other uh, number that I want to work with is uh, dissipation. So let us connect to this dropping resistor and uh, see how much voltage drop we get. 5.17 volts. All right, uh -huh. let's refer to the calculum calculator. Uh, 5.17 volts uh, E over I R ohms law divided by the 2.2 K resistor we have on there. We're dissipating 2.35 milliamps of current. That's important because when we calibrate a dropping resistor later, I'm gonna need that number. All right, I think we're ready to work on this now. We're gonna give her a minute to cool down. Meanwhile, I'm gonna figure out where to put this thing. So I got a standoff there. So this can mount like literally right there. And if we do it half cocked, it'll be a little off, but at least it'll be straight. I gotta go drill a hole in that now. All right, let's see here. Got to remove this screw. We got a screw with a spacer going into one of the PCB standoffs. That screw with that spacer should sit right about there. Oh yeah, it's got some decent purchase. I'll grab another 632 screw, let's see if we can bomb it through here. I might need to modify that hole. She's not going in, it's too tight. Ta-da, there we go. We have a nice solid mounting point for this. Now we need components. Very, very simple situation. We need two capacitors and two diodes. All of which I think I can find on this board. So in order for this uh, voltage doubler to work, let's refer to this again. Two capacitors. We're going to want double the value that they're using. So what's this amp have on it? Oh, 22 UF, 100 volts. Ah, uh, bias circuits often have 10. 22, yes. Uh, here we have some 47 UF, 200 volt capacitors. We can salvage this. Just so happens there's a pair. So that's great. I forgot to plug in my heat iron. That is wonderful. Oh, I'm glad this thing heats up so fast. Release. Okay, what do we have here? They got some stubby little legs, but I think I can make them work. I'd probably use like 100 UF just for redundancy. I actually have some on order, but they're not in, so. Salvage. Wow, these are gonna take up so much room on this board. That's okay though. It gives us room for other circuits. <laughs> other things that I might have planned in the future. Yes, that will work quite nicely. Now, do I want to salvage diodes or do I just want to use some fresh ones? I ordered some fresh ones recently, so I have lots of diodes. I see one for N07, but the other one has a different part number. Let's check a different board. This is Wasteland Engineering at its finest. Oh, there's all sorts of 4N07s. One N4007s on here. Thing is, I kind of need some long leads underneath to connect all this stuff together, so... 
Yeah, I'm just gonna use fresh diodes. One and four, 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 seven. All right, let's build this thing. <laughs> it's gonna be so difficult, sir. I'm gonna make sure these are oriented correctly. They appear that they are. Let's get some diodes in place. Make sure everything's oriented the correct way. I'll just hover them a little bit like that. Kind of like hovered components. All right, so this guy's gotta go down and connect to that capacitor. Let's bring this one over to this capacitor. Now, these two guys here, they need to combine with the bias supply when it comes in, and then we have to get the other part of the bias supply up here. So I'm gonna clip these down, hopefully be able to use the leads to finish this. Right about there should do. And then I guess we'll fold these capacitor terminals over. Yeah, they mostly reach. Uh, <laughs> I think that's about all we need to do to this guy. We're gonna have to start putting wires on it. I'll get the wires that are gonna go to the circuit board ready. We will use white and blue. White will be our positive that will go to ground, and blue will be our negative, which will go to feed the bias circuit. Come on. Snack happy. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I should have, I should have, yeah. Gotta correct this a little bit. Pull this out. Put this in under, just like that. Now let's fold this down. There. It's all gonna get held into place now. That'll do. Time for blue. Okay, working back inside the amplifier now, we need to release our wires. So the base comes out of this hole here. All right, and this guy, get out. And we're gonna need to open up a ground hole here. We're gonna have to open these holes in general. All right, so on petite circuit de fromage, we'll mount here. Those wires are gonna come around there, that's fine. Actually, that's kind of nice how they're both gonna go right beside each other right over there. But we gotta get these wires on here now. These wires, which I hope are gonna fit through the holes on this little board. So one has to go here. Oh, perfect, nice. And then one has to go here. That will just combine with these two guys. And then just these guys together. I suppose we'll just fold these over in on themselves. Just gotta figure out what to do with this other wire. I don't really wanna trim it down. I'll just poke it through that hole. Yeah, that'll look nice. All right, this um, circuit's pretty much done. We can slap down this Slim Jim. Voila. So these wires will come around over ear somewhere. We're gonna snap ample slack and then give them a twist. All right, let's connect them up. Blue is negative bias, white goes to ground. Now, I gotta start off by pulling this dropping resistor out because it's not gonna be the correct value anymore. So bias is disabled. I'm gonna pull the power tube so things don't go thermal nuclear. And we're gonna give this guy some power and see uh, where these voltages sit. We're also uh, gonna make sure there's no smoke. Let us grab a ground. All right, what do we have here? The new bias supply is, oof. 93 volts, and we need 88. Mmm, how are we gonna do that? Well, it's simple. You see, we have this leftover diode right here, which is part and parcel of the old rectifier supply, but this new board's doing all our rectification. We no longer need that diode, so we're gonna exploit that to be a, a dropping position. So if we look at the schematic, we have diode, capacitor, dropping resistor, capacitor. We're gonna replace that diode with another dropping resistor to fill this first reservoir, and then that'll be our final drop. So. If we got 93 and we need 88, let's see if we can do some uh, math. I'm not gonna use Ohm's law. I'm gonna use my little calculator that I built. We got 93.6, we want 88 volts, and our dissipation 0 0.00235 milliamps. Oh, is it a 2.2K? You mean like the one we just pulled out? Well, what do you know? Oh, I just love it when a plan comes together. Gotta find that original resistor. Bum, 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 bum. What are we looking for again? All right, let's get our original 15K dropping resistor back into the bias circuit where it belongs. Let us tack that into place. Now, let us remove that diode and in place where that diode was, let's, uh, let's chuck this 2.2K in there. All right, now, what does this circuit look like? Power. Da -da 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 -da. On this side, 91 volts. Okay, it's changed a bit. On this side, 86 volts. 
Ooh, close enough. Why we saw a drop here once we actually added it to the circuit with this dropping resistor. 85 on that side, 86 volts. Then our 50 volts on that side. Let's put some tubes in and see what happens. Her hurts, stand by, go on. Jumps to 35, 36 on this tube. On this tube, 30. So this tube's your target right here. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Oh boy, it's really sensitive. What's our lowest we can get? Wow, it goes right down. Now that we have the proper dropping resistor in there, we can affect the circuit the way we need. And then can we like, oh, we can, we can, far oh boy, oh boy, it, sh yeah. So let's hit 45. Yeah, we, we got Mondo range on this now, so. Bam! We got 45 on our 6 l 6s Now let's go get our 6CA7s and see if they'll hit target now. The RGG 6CA7s are one of my favorite tubes in this amp thus far. They get a little darker grind to them. Really, really likes to roar or growl. Now mind you, those WXTs, they got a nice chugga 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 to them. You plug in the old seven string there. I've been as this thing, it sounds like a freaking evil train chugging away down the tracks. I'm not gonna be doing listening tests or sound samples today because this this is this this mod's not about tone. It's about getting these tubes to behave the way we need them to. So what do we have? Huh, you see what I mean? Same negative voltage. Heh, <laughs> eh, our numbers are way low. But does that mean now we can dial that back and get these guys to 45? Oh, it's going. It's going. It's gone. Oh yeah. 45 milliamps. That's what I bias this amp to. Uh, without doing math, I just it, it's a good number. Do 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 your bias math. This is just me. What about that's one tube? The other tube? 47. One tube's a little bit off. We'll bring the hot tube down to target. And our problem is solved. Voltage doubler in the Jet City, getting our bias exactly where we need it to be with an improvised transformer. Ha ha, transformer that was cheap and saved us money, which is why I get to have nice things. Because when you can't afford nice things, you make them. I hope you enjoyed this. That is, we are done here. Stay tuned for more. Uh, I have a couple more mods that I'm gonna do to this amp. So the cycle of violence is not over yet. Oh boy. Yay, I get to play my 6CA7s again.